And so the Jews had to begin to prepare for this season, yes? yes. But they didn't. Because he arrived, they didn't recognize him, he left. You know, so they were waiting for his arrival. He came, he left, and they still don't know he's here. But then now the world is awaiting his second coming. The first time he came, kind of snuck in and out. Nobody recognized him from his own people. But the next time, everybody will know who he is. Amen? Yeah. Well, you know, sneaking in in a little private here, you know, manger in Bethlehem. And so today, what we're looking at today is a season. We're looking at season. We're looking at why, what's the purpose of Christmas, and what do we have to celebrate anyway. And I was, as I was studying this lesson, something occurred to me that it's not something, it's not only the fact that something was given to us, but we tend to forget, forget the fact that something was removed from us. Did you get that? Yes. It's not only that something was given to us as a gift, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, but something simultaneously was removed from us. That thing is called sin. Amen? So he gave us his gift, the pure gift, but then he removed the unholiness of us. Sin. Amen? Amen? Let's just look and see what took place in the beginning when he first... The angels, let's say, when they first announced it to common people, the story goes, that night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord. You know the one that you've been, all these Sabbaths, you go to the Sabbath school and you're learning about the Messiah is coming, he's coming. Guess what? He's here. He really is here. And so, he's born, he has been born in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in snuggling strips of cloth. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each of them, each of them, each of them, come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph. There he is, JC, I mean, uh, JC. And there, oh, I'm just checking to see if you're awake. And there was a baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds stole I want you to listen to this. The shepherd told everyone. Okay? The shepherds did not keep it to themselves. The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. The shepherds went back to their flocks and their sheep, glorifying God and praising Him. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. That they didn't keep the good news to themselves. No, they didn't. They spread the news. Hey, God, you need to learn about this. Remember what the Bible says? Here it is. It's happened. Come and check it out. Amen? Amen? We need to be busy about our Father's business. We need to be busy about sharing the good news that the angels have shared with us, that we have told, that, that, that we've been told. Amen? Amen? So, during this season, we come around and Faster and faster every time. You know, they say, time flies. Yeah. As you get older, it really is. It goes that way. I'm realizing that. But how do we know if we are prepared for the season of Christmas? Now they want to call it Xmas. Is this the season of, a, of survival with an overload of commitments, debt, tension, work, deadlines, crowded shopping malls, or is this a season for celebration? If so, most of us celebrate events, family gatherings, eating good food, you know, vacations, giving gifts, and celebrating beautiful occasions and decorations all around us. But in all of our busyness, we tend to forget the real reason for the season. We stress ourselves out. Amen? Yeah. Because we got to remember to get this for this one, get that for that one, and if we leave anybody out, then you're going to have some beef 
So we are so busy. The real reason for the season is the celebration of God's gift, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This can be foremost in our mind, foremost in the conversations. And there's so many ways to slip that in there. You know, I find if we are sensitive to the Spirit. And so we are people who often forget, but then we straighten ourselves with time. We remember, really, who are we? Why are we here? You know, why, why are we celebrating this season anyway? Why should we celebrate Christ? What did He do for me lately? Okay? So, I want to look at it in terms of just a little Q&A. Because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. We need to interact with each other. And we need to keep each other posted on what's happening. In the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 7 and 8. Something took place. You know, God's always had this issue with the children of Israel. But in chapter 32, verses 7 and 8, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go then thee down, for thy people which thou... See, how, look, look at how God puts this. Did you get that first part? Listen to it again. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people. Not my people, the one that I brought up, the one that I created. He says, For thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, worship it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be the gods of Israel, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Now back in those days, Pagan religions worship a bull, a young bull. And this was ingrained into the culture of Israel. And so they didn't make any other image they could have, but they resorted to making that young bull because that was the predominant figure, the icon of the day of worship and strength and virility and fertility. So they built, they created this bull as that symbol. My question to you is, what can it be, why can it be easy to forget how much God has done for us? Why is it so easy? Not a rhetorical question. Why is it we find so easy that we tend to forget? What are some of the things that interfere with us remembering what God has done for us? Anybody? Circumstances. Circumstances. Anyone else? Uh, idol. Idol. Idolatry. Anyone else? Short-sightedness. Short-sightedness. Or at all of the above. And so much more. We have careers, we have businesses, we have relationships, marriages. We have some of us that work around some people that are difficult to get along with. And so all these things sometimes they get in the way and they distract us. Amen? But we need to refocus ourselves. And what are some of the common distractions can take place that was said before? The Bible says, he who keeps their mind stayed on him, he will keep in perfect peace. When we know Jesus and what he's expecting of us, amen, it doesn't matter where we go, it doesn't matter what comes to our way, it doesn't matter the challenges that we come, because you know that as soon as Jesus went into the wilderness, the Bible says he was tempted, and immediately he was tempted, and immediately, immediately. As soon as the Lord blesses you, the devil comes to steal, to kill, to try to destroy. Amen? We need to remain focused. What does Jesus tell the disciples to remember? Somebody turn to Matthew 16, verses 9 and 10. Quickly, and just respond to that. Matthew 16, verses 9 and 10. What does Jesus tell the disciples to remember? There's some key things there. As soon as you get it, just go ahead and read it. Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? For the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? If anybody should know, it should have been them. They were there. They were present. Yes? But somehow they seem to forget. Something about memory. Memory must be triggered. Good or bad, it needs a trigger point. Next, 
It categorizes feelings based on importance, which leads to duration, which leads to the degree of pain, joy, ecstasy, hope, and so forth. It needs a trigger. Once that trigger of memory happens, it either goes to a good image or to a bad image, a bad situation. And so the more we stay in the Word, the more the Word will find its way up and through our spirit. Amen? Amen. The other thing here is, what kind of tools can we use to remember Scripture? What kind of tools can we use to remember the Word that is inside of us? Anyone over here? What kinds of words, what kinds of tools can we use to remember or bring to memory the Word that is in us? What are tools? What are some tactics? What are some techniques that we can use? Right now. Uh, huh? Index cards? Index cards over here? What kinds of tools, what kind of techniques can we use to encourage ourselves? In the age of technology today, your phone, you can do verse of the day. Here we go. Beautiful. What else, Susan? Listen to Christian music. Listen to Christian music. Anyone else? To encourage yourself. What do you do on a daily basis? You know, I heard a pastor said, and he's a very uh, well-known pastor who travels 240 days out of a year. He said, when I'm refer, when I'm having a discussion with my staff, my first question to them is, how much time are you spending in prayer? And he says, I will tell their commitment by how much time they spend in prayer. So, one of the things we have to find are ways, like Omar, uh, Omar just said, maybe use technology. Use whatever it is we have these days, but your time in prayer is so critical. It really determines your success for that day or your ability to withhold yourself for that day or your ability to say, come what may, like Job, I will serve him. Your time in prayer. I just want to put that out there. It is so key to whether we succeed or we don't. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm just trying to encourage you. We're talking about celebrating, but we need to know why we're celebrating and should we just celebrate and leave the others to go their way. Amen? Amen. Uh, I need somebody to look at uh, Numbers chapter 15, verse 39. Numbers 15, 39. What question is, when you find that, is what would remind the people of the commands of the Lord in Numbers 15.39. Tassels. Right? Why was that so important to them? Because the word was given and it was a visible, tangible way of saying somebody's asking, somebody looks at you and says, what's that? Why are you wearing that? In, you know, in college, um, I used to write notes on stickies and I'll stick it on, literally I'll stick it on my chest. And I would forget what's on me. But then someone would look at me and say, King, what's that? Oh, oh man, yeah, I have to do this today. <laughs> right? I would forget. But that's the reason why I put it there and I forgot what it was there. But someone would see it and says, King, uh, why are you wearing that? And, oh man, thank you for reminding me. So what are some ways, for them it was a tassel, to remind them of who they were, who they are. What methods do you have to remind you? Or someone can say, oh, King, remember, you told me to remind you to do this, to say this. What methods do you have to remind you, to do something, to pray, to study the Word? And it's very critical. It's very critical that we develop methods. Huh? Oh. Uh, one thing I do is I put a, a, I put a alarm on my phone. Alarms on your phone. That's one way, yes. Anyone else? No? You all got it like that? You know exactly, you know, you're just like cruising. You know, you don't need any reminders, you know, like Holy Spirit, you know, like, I got this. Yes, Anthony. Make uh, like notes, uh, you know, like stick up notes. 
Stick a note. Amen. All right. So we're looking right now. Let's look at celebrate my past is forgiven. Why is it so important that your past be forgiven? Anyone? Why is it so important that your past be forgiven? Why? You live so perfect. Your life has been so good. You've done just everything right throughout your life. So, you know, Jesus doesn't have to come at all. I got this. Right? So why is it important that where we've been, what we've done, what we've thought, what we intended to do, be washed by the blood of Jesus? Yes. So you know where you come, you come from and you know that you don't have to live there in the past. You don't have to stay in the past. Yeah. Amen. I know I don't want to stay in my past. Yes, Anthony. No, and then, it, it provides salvation and enables us to have a relationship. Amen. Carolyn, you were going to say something? No, oh, we wanted to have something like that. Anthony said to have a relationship with the Father. We, we, we can't have that sin upon us, and Jesus took that sin. So that's why we're able to bridge that gap in Amen. relationship with the Lord. The Amen. Father. Yes. The three. It Father. restores. Yes. Susan. Well, I mean, if we keep looking back, we really won't know how to go through it. Mm -hmm. Or get lost or we get off track. Mm -hmm. Because our past will keep us from seeing clearly the path we have to take. Amen. It's an important point, but we also have to remember. What did, uh, throughout the Old Testament, what was God telling the people to do? Remember, remember, remember. I brought you out of here. I brought you out of there. I solved this problem for you. And so what it is that happens when we remember where we've been, we can do one of two things. We can remain in there and just let the wheel turn and turn and turn. Or we can say, this is my springboard. This is what my hope, where it comes from. I remember where I was, but I'm no longer there. Some in, in the Baptist church, some, sometimes they use a phrase, I'm not what I want to be, but I'm not who I used to be. Amen? Amen? So we need to remember for that reason. It helps us to, be, to encourage ourselves, like David would say, why art thou cast down on my soul? You got to encourage yourself, and we have to encourage each other. In Mark... 217, we have a question. Jesus tells that us that it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Which, which do you think he has come to call? Those who are righteous or those who are unrighteous? Some people go to the doctor just to make sure they're okay. They're not sick, they're not feeling ill or anything. I'm just going to go and get a checkup to make sure everything is good. Sometimes, and for the most part, People go to the doctor because something is wrong. Something is not right. How can you tell in your own walk with the Lord that something is not right? Can you? Think about that. Can you tell in your walk with the Lord that something is not right? What are signs? What are some signs? Go ahead. For instance, uh, well, you asked earlier about prayer. Maybe you're not praying as often, you're not reading the word as often. Amen. Those are very, uh, two very key uh, reasons. Anyone else? Your mood, your spirit changes. Your mood, your spiritual changes. Yes, you know why? Like on the job, uh, one of my coworkers made a statement and he was very emphatic about it. He was telling um, another coworker about it. He says, a lot of people in here, you know, they call themselves Christians. But a lot of them are just not Christians. I can tell because I can see. He's not a Christian himself. But he can tell from those he's heard say, I'm a Christian. He said, I know these people are not Christians. All right? And so, uh, they are fronting, as they would say. And so, when we come, wherever we go, we represent Jesus. And we represent the healing that he brings. We represent the hope that he brings. Amen? Because you go to a doctor, they're going to diagnose your case, 
and welcome Ms. Santos, my co-worker. Glad you were able to make it. So he, repre he we represent that contact that people need to make with the Lord. Amen? And so things that we do, things that we say, helps people around us to realize there is, like Lauren said earlier, there is a bomb in Delia. There is a healing out there because so and so, I can see it and I can hear it and I can touch it. So there is hope for me. Let me talk to so and so about it. Maybe they know something that I need to know. Amen? Amen. We look at Romans chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Romans chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And I'll read it. 7, uh, 4, verses 7 and 8. It says this, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Understanding that we were all born in sin and shaping it, like David said, when Jesus comes with this gift of life, he removes that burden, he removes that weight off of us, and we, he puts us in a place where now, like Paul can say, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Because the burden has been lifted. I am no longer imprisoned by this chain of sin. I can walk away from it. Amen? Amen. It's a beautiful thing to know. It's a beautiful thing to understand what Jesus did for us, how we did it, and what our responsibilities are. The world needs to know about Jesus. It needs to know about the gift, but it also needs to know about what the gift took place. I mean, what the gift took care of. This gift of life replaced death. It took the sin away. They ask you, so what is sin? Anything that opposes God. Your mindset, your heart, your habits, your behavior. That is sin. Why did Jesus come? Because you were born in it. You were shaped in it. You were molded in it. Everything about you says sin, sin, sin. Amen? So we need to share this good news with the world as we busy ourselves with, with um, celebrating forgiveness. Some people don't know, why should I be forgiven? I've been a good person all my life. Are you, how do you compare with God? You're good to God's good. How does that compare? Is there a parallel? There isn't. Jesus himself said, there's only one that's good. My Father, which is in heaven. Amen? Amen? And so we need to celebrate. When we're celebrating, we need to understand that others as well need to know what you celebrate, what we are celebrating. Amen? Amen? So why is it important for us to know that there is nothing that God hasn't forgiven about our sin? Why is it important? And why should we be so diligent in sharing the good news? Let me just share a quick story. There's a story about an Olympian. You know, the Olympics take every four years, right? But this Olympian, a swimmer, eight day, I mean eight hours a day, this swimmer had to commit himself to prepare himself for an event four years down the road. Eight hours a day. One of them decided, you know, I'll stick to it. The other one decided I have better things to do with my time. But eight hours a day, you have to commit yourself for an event that's four years down the road. How do we commit ourselves? How do we prepare ourselves for the event that is down the road? We don't know. Jesus himself said, I don't know when he's coming back. Not only one that knows is my father. But I have to be busy about my father's business. I have to busy preparing for his return. I have to condition myself to make sure that if and when I'm there for the event, because nothing is guaranteed that we're going to be here tomorrow, but if and when I'm there for that event, I'm ready. I'm ready to go in the rapture. I'm ready for when he says to me, well done good and faithful servant, because I've been spending my life preparing on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, 
Next one is celebrate God's spirit is in us. God's spirit is in me. Sometimes you get beaten down. Sometimes, you know, you feel like giving up. And unless the Lord sends a laborer, for instance, Carol was showing, uh, sharing that story with us, there was Ramona and there was Mary. She was going through something that she had no idea about what was going on deeper. On the surface, it looked like one thing, but deep within, something more serious was going on. On the surface, a lot of times we were just there and we're not really, you know, praising the Lord and we're here and we're going through the motion. But there's something deeper within our hearts, within our souls, within our spirit that's going on that no one is aware of but the Spirit of God. And unless someone is sensitive enough to the Spirit to say, you know what, we need to take care of this before, because we're not quite sure. God raised Jesus from the dead, living you. And just as God raised Jesus, Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Amen. There is a there is a poem by Maya Angelou. Still, I rise. All right. Sometimes when we forget that the Spirit of God is in us, you know, the word says, "A good man or righteous man, old woman, falls seven times, but then again they get up, because greater is he that is in me and you than he that is in the world." The poem part of it, I just want to uh, say, is um, still it's it's uh, called "Still I Rise." Why? Because greater is he that is in me that is in the world. That's not the poem. Still I rise for no weapon formed against me. I am, I am, of what I'm writing is my interpretation of what, um, my interpretation of what the poem was speaking about. But sometimes we get to the point where we are so down that, I got it back to see you. Siri? <laughs> I need my Angela's poem, Still I Rise. Sorry. She's sorry. <laughs> Still I Rise by Maya Angela. I'm not going to read all of it, but it's an incredible poem. You have it? Okay. Be quiet, Siri. Okay, so I can see it. All right. So you write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll arise. Does my season, does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of ties, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered hot eyes, shoulders failing down like teardrops, falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my heartiness offend you? Do you take it awful hard? Because I laugh like I've got a gold mine digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, I'll rise. Sometimes we get beaten down. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes people closest to us will be the ones through whom these things come. But you have to be inside. Inside of you, you have to be strong enough to say, still I'll rise. Amen. The Holy Spirit that is within me will get me up once again. So shoot all you want. That's right. Insult all you want. Condemn me all you want. Still I'll rise. Amen. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So you have to remember that. Amen. One other point I'd like to make here is celebrate. You, you, you look at uh, the way you look at uh, death. It says celebrate I can change. Now death is something that we don't welcome. Nobody wants to hear about it. Nobody wants to experience it. But a couple of examples that I have here in not knowing where you're going with it, but because the Spirit is leading you and the Spirit is in you, 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 you go ahead with it. It's like Marvel Comics. Stan Lee, he just passed recently. 
But when Marvel Comics began, it was 2D, it was just on paper. Then it moved into the movies, I mean the television. Now it's in the movies, now it's a multi-billion dollar corporation. But you see, Stan is blessing billions of people with the gift that the Spirit of God put inside of them. Who is benefiting from your gift? Is the question. Okay, he started on paper, he moved to television and to movies. And billions of people today are being blessed by his gift. Who is being blessed by your gift? Are you sticking to your gift? Are you developing your gift? Are you letting the Spirit on the inside of you continue to show you the way, not be short-sighted? And we look at death sometimes, like I said, and we don't understand about death. We don't understand why people do the things they do, right? There was a story years ago about a woman. She had a 14-year-old, one boy was 14 months old, another one was three years old. I'm saying this just to encourage us to understand why we need to be about our father's business, why we need to be praying, why we don't understand everything, but just because it says do it, we go ahead and do it. Because there are people out there whose minds are not right. Amen? And the more time you spend in prayer, the more access God has to touch somebody who is just so far away. For instance, there was a man in India, 17-year-old young man on his bed, because he was about, he was, he committed, he tried to commit suicide. So they're watching him. While he's in there, some missionary from India that came from another country, Decide, the Lord says, go send the Bible, go give this young man a Bible. They went with the Bible, gave the young man. Now his belief was totally, he was non-theistic, you know, he didn't believe in any gods. But he opened up the book and he read where Jesus says, because I have life, because I live, you will live. And that, just that alone, changed it. Today he's 70 years old, he is the man that I said that travels 240 days a year. But he doesn't like to go to churches. What he does, he's an apologist. He goes and he challenges people whose faith is not with God. They're totally against God. But someone took a Bible to him because someone was in tune with the Spirit. So now he is he's affecting the lives of millions of people around the world. This lady, just to go back to this lady with this troubled mind, she had a 14-year-old month, a 14-month-year-old, and a 3-year-old. She puts them in the back seat in their car seats. She is very careful about, you know, making sure that they're secure and that they won't fall out. And the kids are no happy, you know, we're gonna go with mommy. And so mommy finishes securing them, she closes the door, she goes around the driver's side, turns the car on, and let's closes the door and let the car go down into an embankment into a lake with the boys strapped in the back seat. They drown, of course. She goes running to the police to report that her kids are missing, right? Making a big stink. The police try to find a profile of this person that would do such a thing, you know, like kidnap her kids and she doesn't know her kids. Then she goes to a pastor and she's bawling her heart. I passed the pastor. Uh, I need to pray because I don't know who could do this to my kids and I just need counseling. I need help. And so the pastor's praying for her. But, and this was all over the news years ago. It turned out, because of smart and clever investigation, they discovered that she's the one, the monster that they were looking for. She's the one that did that to her kids. This is where it all came out, that she put them in the seat and she drowned her kids. We have, years ago, that I did thought, I mean, the guy, Jeffrey Dahmer, cannibal. He killed his victim, freezes some parts and eats the others. You know, we have the Menendez brothers. Right? They kill their parents, the mom is dragging herself from the wounds, loaded up, and finishes her off, go out with the money, and buy themselves a new vehicle. And goes about driving like nobody's business. So, we don't know who we are affecting when we pray, but we must pray. We want to celebrate the season, I'll come back to this, we want to celebrate the gift that we have. But we also have to realize that there's some who have to get that sin removed. The gift we receive, but the sin that was removed. There are a lot of them out there. There are people, you know about the shootings here and there. It's, we need to be about our Father's business. We need to be praying.
for people every single day, especially when we don't feel like praying. We need to pray. We must pray. You make some time, private time to pray, but in the day when you have those breaks, we need to be about prayer. You don't know whose life you're affecting, but some of these can be prevented because greater is he that is in us. And God, he says, he looks after his word to perform it. It will not return to him void. Amen? Amen. And so, in closing, I just want to give you a, a reminder. While we're celebrating the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for us, amen, we need to think about the goodness of Jesus that others don't know about. Okay? Uh, I think I'm running out of time. I gave Lawrence some... Do I say you don't have time, Pastor Benny? Okay. There's a sheet, there's a little note uh, sticky that I gave Lauren. And what I want you to do is with that... Oops. Okay. Think of... Uh, you remember it was Okay. How would our lives be different if we had an attitude of celebration for Jesus? It would help us with our hope. It would clarify our purpose. It would give us an attitude of gratitude. It would strengthen our faith and change our perspective. What I would like for you to think about is listing something about your life that needs a little, you know, a little help. An area in your life that you see and you understand and you know, nobody has to tell you this, you know that needs some work. I want you to take the time out and list that. Whatever that area is, whatever that thing is that you need to work on, I want you to list that. Just take the time out, list that. Ahora. Ahora. Ahora mismo. This thing is to be your tassel. This thing is to be your reminder that you need to be about your father's business. So while you're listening, you just don't list anything. Let this be that tassel that reminds you of who you are, of your commitment to Christ, of your commitment to prayer, of the power of prayer, the power of the Spirit of God inside of you what it wants to do, what it could do, even if people are not next to you or close by, the Lord will find a way, but the Lord gave us tools to work with. Amen? Amen. So let me just pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you.